Oh, I fired at a dream last night that I climbed up this massive tree and you got up through it by climbing up spikes that were into the side of the tree, like just spikes, just side, and you just climbed, I climbed up, and I climbed all the way to the top, and I rescued this damsel in distress, and carried her down on one arm as I climbed back down the tree. Ah, oh, that'd be so cool to do that. That'd be so wicked. I'd love to do that. Save a damsel at the top of a tree in distress. The damsel that is. That would be ace. So what are you doing, Rob? Taking the engine off. Sold the engine. Sold the engine. Sold the engine. And we're putting the. That's place. actually the old engine on there with the new top on it. You put it around the windshield. Uh, hang on. Oh, well, hang on. How are we going to take it? No, actually, we're going to take it up these steps. The back where it was, actually. Yeah. Okay, so explain to me. You're using the halyard yeah. to lift the outboard. the outboard off. Yeah. And then where you're going to swap it out with the one. We'll get, yeah, and then we'll get the new, new second-hand one and pop it back on. Just give it a whirl. Yeah. Oh. Close to that bit. As we oh, can. I want to work it off. Oh, you want to work? Yeah. Bring it in. Yeah, let it down. So, Rob, you're just putting it now, attaching it to the table. Why is that? Oh, I'm just going to open it up, give it a clean up, and give the carby another clean. Oh, that's actually okay, but I'll just make sure it's 100%. And um, yeah, make sure it's good to go. So, this is the new engine, or new old engine. We've actually swapped over the covers on the, so this is the old engine cover that was on the old engine because we don't want the new engine looking too new. We don't want to be looking too attractive. But anyway, we're going to hook this engine up now and we're going to shift it onto the boat. Okay, stop! You just over here in the thing. Yeah, a little quicker than that. Pass me the rope. Stop! Okay, you down! Don't use the rope, grab the handle. Not the easiest thing to do while the boat's not. Rocking and rolling. Going down! Go! Alright, you're off. Okay! Lift it up. You guys, do you want to start it, Declan? Maybe Declan should start it first time. <laughs> Declan, I'm going to give you the honours. Is that okay? It feels different. It feels different already. Different ha the handle's not worn. You know, the handle was quite worn. It's all got grooves in the handle still. Oh yeah. Not yeah. that that really makes much difference to the performance. It means it's faster. <laughs> well, it also <laughs> does stay. It stays. It's, it's in forward. It's in gear. It's in gear. Nice smoky start as well. <laughs> Look at that. That's very, very smoky. Yeah, it's smooth. So this is not the engine's maiden voyage, but it's our maiden voyage for this engine. 
for this particular engine. So it has well, been I mean, run before. Is we it like a refurbished engine or something? Because all the parts on it are, are like new. Yeah. Apart from that top, which just looks so holy hum. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the top of it. Means no one wants to steal it. Once around the bay, Jeeves. Here we go. This is Rob, and I'm Rachel, and these are our boys, Finn, Declan, and Ivan. We have sailed our catamaran Javelo across the Pacific Ocean. We would love it if you join us for the adventure. Cause this way is my home. giving us your car. We're just now driving through the lovely, lovely countryside. We've hit the wine growing region. So there's a lot of organic and biodynamic wineries here that I like. I like biodynamic. Organic is good, biodynamic is even gooder. Your English is most bestest. bestest. It's a 40 minute drive from Bustleton to Margaret River. The region is famous for its vineyards, its surf beach, it's gourmet food and our friends Dan and Sarah and family who joined us aboard Javelo for a sail along the Ningaloo coast last year. With all this to choose from we took a walk by the river and turned our focus onto how the west was won and trees, beautiful tall trees. Take it away Dan. Yeah so that house behind us is a group settlement house and basically in the 1920s you would have heard of the 10 pound bombs. So these were the 14 pound palms. So you paid 14 pounds, you got your passage out to Australia with your family. And the idea was that you came out to Australia and they wanted to create a dairy industry in Western Australia because they were still getting all their butter and all their dairy in from the East Coast. So the government had this scheme called the Group Settlement Scheme. So you came out, you only got your house once you cleared your 100 acres. And we're talking like massive carry trees and very dense forest. So you've got a tin shed to live in. Once you cleared your 100 acres by hand, um, you then got your house built for you where you could live. And uh, it was incredibly, incredibly hard work. And these families had no idea. They were, there were posters of, you know, these rolling plains, like, you know, lovely, lush English countryside and said, come to Australia, come to Western Australia. It's a beautiful lifestyle. So they were expecting these rolling green pastures and, and an easy lifestyle. But when they came out here, it was just thick, dense forest, incredibly cold in winter, uh, incredibly hot in summer. And um, out of all the families that came out here, only a very small percentage actually made it. And then they bought up their neighboring farms and then they could make it sort of worthwhile because they sort of cashed in on the work that the other families had done. But most of them failed but there's still lots of houses around Margaret River, like this one called the, you know, the groupies we call them, and the old houses that, that were built for the families. This is a curry tree, and uh, not cowrie, curry. They're only found in the southwest of WA, actually in a really small pocket from like Margaret River down to Pemberton, and they love the loamy sort of clay soils. This is what they were all like through here. Every single tree was massive like this and they got um, extensively logged in between about 1880 to 1910, so 30 years. But there's still trees, old growth trees like this. This would be 400, four to 500 years old, but it's got, it's all gnarly and it's got burls all over it. And when they came through here looking for timber, they would have thought, oh, nah, nah, that's no good. We don't want that sort of timber. So these ones were left behind. Um, and they also left them because even back then they had some idea about seeding forests. So they left these as seed trees to sort of regenerate. And they thought, oh, in another 
50 years we're going to be able to log again. They didn't realise that it takes 400 years for these trees to get this big. Um, but carry trees are actually amazing because the timber, is, the grains are very long and it, it creates these um, long spans of, of incredible strength. So they were used for bridge building all over the world, yeah. especially in England. If you go to England, all the old bridges are made of carry. All the old big warehouses with the big span ceilings are made of carry. And, but the most common use that they used it for was paving the roads of London. So they cut it all into rounds and they put it all on the, on the roads and that was so that the you know all the wagons had a you know it wasn't get it wasn't boggy you know they just put them all down and they're all still there today so then they've just put bitumen or tar over the top um, but all of these beautiful carries were pretty much um, harvested and um, sent off to the UK but yeah they're the second biggest trees in the world second only to the Californian redwood Seriously? second tallest I reckon yeah. that um, it's really important to give these trees a hug. Well, and, you know what, uh, as we were walking in here, I was thinking, oh, I'm feeling the huggy tree syndrome. Yeah, in. yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's important for us and it's important for the tree. So yeah. come on, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the Oh, room. my goodness. Oh, God, here we go. Tree, you boys. Tree huggers united. Come on, Declan. Oh. <laughs> oh. See, that tree is feeling the love. Oh, yeah. Come on, Rachel, you've done this before. Admit come it. on. I know, but I've got the camera, so. Yeah. I got to sit on the ground, Mum. This is important. This is important. Ah, uh, oh. oh, bring it in, big guy. Oh, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> you might be wondering what, if anything, this has got to do with sailing. But the first Europeans arriving in Western Australia used these trees to fix their boats and make shelters, long before the timber trade started to export this wood around the world. Not all the carry trees were used for logging. From 1930s to 1952, several carry trees were used as fire lookouts. Because they're so tall, you could climb to the top of them and look out, and they'd look out across the forest looking for smoke. They still do it today, but in fire towers that are man-made. We're here in the Pemberton, Pemberton? Pemberton Forest to have a look at the bicentennial tree. It's 65 meters up. Short. <laughs> We're gonna go climb to the top, but not in these clothes. I need to get into my leisure yes, gear. In something more comfortable, sweet. Yeah. Me too. Let's do it. Much more better up. That's much more better. Yeah, let's go. The boys have started without us. Rob took too long to get changed, I think. Oh, it took forever. <laughs> it's really high. I can't even see them. Holy oh, heck, they're right up there. Holy bajingos. You up for it, Rob? I'm not saying either way at this stage. I'll just, Rob's uh, not much into heights. I'm not, I'm not committing to the top, that's for sure, at this stage. Yeah. Rob doesn't like to go even to the uh, top of the mast. This is quite a bit further than the top of the mast. Our mast is 20 metres. That's what crew are for. Anyway, I'm going to do it with uh, a GoPro. You wouldn't want to drop the GoPro, Rachel. I wouldn't want to drop the GoPro. No, that would be a, a remiss of me. One-handed. Up I go. Hang on, Rach. Just last words? Uh, see you at the top. It feels really safe. Yeah. You could never fall through these holes. You'd never fall through that. There's nothing there to stop you falling through that. <laughs> That's crazy. Craziness. I love it. But I'm not going to do it. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. Oh I'll my goodness, it. it is quite high. Already? The kind of feeling of, oh my God. You haven't even done 10 metres of the 65. It's 65 metres. Oh, you've probably done 10, you're probably at 10, I'm close to 10. I'm look down. Man. I thought I could do this really easily. Oh, that's crazy. Oh my God. That's a long way up. How are you, Rach? She's at the top. Wow. Oh, it's such a long way up. <laughs> That's my target. Oh. So these boys did it before me. How was that for you? It was like kind of easy. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Says that Ivan who wasn't going to do it. No, I said I wasn't going to do this one because it doesn't have a slide back down. Oh. No, how would that slide work? Well, I'm not sure it's as high as this. No, it mustn't. Yeah. But, still. It but look at that view. 
So from here, you get a pretty good view if there's any smoke coming in around the area. And you can report it back to headquarters. And oh, so the great descent goes. starts. Go down, Declan. Good luck, Declan. Doing W chicken, go down like this. Like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't be so silly. No, because you got the ones in front of you. No, well. no, no. Actually, that's kind of better. Oh, oh, is that maybe how you spoke? Well, that's why those ones are there. Oh, wait, I'm not doing that until I get to those ones, though. Oh, okay. I'm not sure this is a good thing or a bad thing. I can't sit here for next to this. Straight down. See, I'm already getting tripped out by those, like, little lines. Wait, Declan, are you serious? What? Is it better like this? <laughs> oh, I don't like that. That's weird. I don't like that. No, I'm going to just go back down the traditional ladder way. Oh, that one's wobbly. That one's quite wobbly. So is that one. Oh my god, that one's so wobbly. I don't know if you can hear me saying that's wobbly and this one's wobbly. Oh my goodness, that one's wobbly. <sighs> that. And now it's my turn! Off I go. Camera going off though. Safety down again, our task was to get Bob to climb a third of the way up the tree to the first platform. Yeah. Hark! Do I hear a damsel in distress? At the first thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first platform? If she was at the top, I'd be there in a flash. Luckily she's only at the first touch. Well, unluckily. Oh, this is so stupid. I don't need to do this. I've got nothing to prove. <laughs> nothing! Declan was just saying that this is how high people get on kiting when they do kite loops. Look down there, man. That's so high. That's a long way up. That's a long way up. You're kiting. You've got a, wee, you've got a few metres to go yet, Declan. Sir Edmund Hillary. I don't know. Did I tell you about Sir Edmund Hillary? I was having a cup of tea in scones with Sir Edmund once and he said to me... Named with that. He said to me, Rob, he said, it's all very well to climb a mountain. Getting back down, you haven't summited a mountain until you get back down again. I've always remembered those words. Not very well, because you just uh, stumbled over them. Well, you know, I'm getting... You're paraphrasing? I'm uh, paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. Ed. He said, you know, a lovely story, Ed, he told us, he said he was, uh, uh, got to the top of Mount Everest and he'd been up there with Tenzing for, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes. And then he went to the side of the ridge, the summit of Mount Everest, and he had a bit of a leak. <laughs> True story. Did he? True story. And he said those words. He said, I took a bit of a leak. <laughs> I'm not going to have a bit of a leak here. I'll do that when I get back down. But um, that's just uh, reality of climbing mountains. Anyway. Great human being. Okay, in fact. stop delaying. Get down. Here we go. <clears throat> You make it look easy, Robert. Nerves of steel. <laughs> Holding on tight. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, give us a thumbs up, and best of all, share it. It helps us heaps. Come on, eat it so bad.